Okay, so today we're going to talk about Bootstrap. Bootstrap is basically a bunch of CSS and JavaScript that's pre-built for you so you can add to a web page. You write the HTML, they provide the JavaScript and the CSS, and then you've got this beautiful looking website because they've already done the things that are common to building every website. So you need to style buttons, you need to style your fonts, you need to create your layout, build nav bars and footers and headers, all these different parts that are normally part of your website. Bootstrap does all those common tasks. You want to have those cards, you want to have forms that are laid out well. They've written that CSS for you. So how do we install this? How do we get going with it? Well, the website is getbootstrap.com. Version 4 was a long time in development, but it's out now. It's up to version 4.1.3, I think, is the current one. But version 4 is the major version that we're going to be looking at today. So, on the website, there's a download button, and you can download it, but I'm going to encourage you to not download it and have it for anything other than just a reference. If you want to download it, if you want to look at the files, absolutely do that. It's a good learning experience for you to do that. But if you're going to build a website and you're not going to be doing some advanced work, getting into the SAS and really changing the code that they've written, then it's better to use the CDN versions. Those are the Content Delivery Network. Content Delivery Networks are just uh, companies that set up servers all over the world and on those servers they have copies of the same code. So whatever the closest location for you is, that's where you're going to be getting the files from. So those CSS and JavaScript files that are part of Bootstrap, those are the things that you're going to be getting. Alright, now, on the Getting Started page, if we look here, you can see there's a few links. And this is the quickest and easiest way to get started with it. We just take that CSS file, we come into the head of our HTML file. I just started a basic HTML file here. I'm going to paste in the link for the CSS. Now I'm going to have my own CSS file as well, so I will add my link for that. I'm not throwing away my own CSS, but I'm going to create one called main. Rel is style sheet, as always. There we go. Down inside the body, at the very end of the body, if I'm writing some JavaScript, well, I'm going to point to my JavaScript file, just like that. And then right above where I put my JavaScript file, that's where I'm going to take all of their JavaScript files. So I'll copy that, come back in here, and paste. There we go. I'll just do a little bit of alignment. All right, so I have their three JavaScript files, and then mine. Their CSS file, and mine. Now, what are these three JavaScript files? Well, jQuery is one of them. The pre-built version, the version that they provide, requires jQuery for doing some things. There's a few of the elements that you would have inside of your web page, like a nav bar that resizes and you can click on a button and it will show the menu and hide the menu. Um, Tooltips, so when you mouse over something or when you click on something, you can get this little automated tooltip to appear that you can style. Um, that uses the popper library as well as jQuery and their JavaScript file. This is their core JavaScript file. Now there is a non-jQuery version that you can get and on the website, oh sorry, not on their website, but you can search for and find it. Um, Bootstrap Native, I believe, is the name for it. Yeah, there we go. So Bootstrap Native. So a better way to bootstrap, they say. Um, now on here, you have to make sure that you are looking at the right one. So there's a version 3 and a version 4. We want version 4. Because version 3 and 4 of Bootstrap are different, the Bootstrap Native versions are different as well. So on here, uh, if you want to, you can go in and start looking at this. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of documentation. I'll probably do another video on this topic itself. If getting rid of jQuery and optimizing and shrinking things as much as possible is very important to you for your site, then this is probably a better way to go. Just know that you're going to give up a handful of functionality to achieve that. Okay, so back to ours. 
we've got the CSS and we've got the three JavaScript files and that's it. That's all that we need to use Bootstrap. This CSS file of mine, I'm going to use to override styles or add to their styles. My JavaScript file is going to be functionality that I'm adding to the website, not the stuff that's attached to the Bootstrap functionality. All right, now with that basically done, we can come back in here. Here's my website right now. I look at it, nothing's on the page because I don't have any content. And you shouldn't expect anything because we haven't added any real HTML to the body. We've just added it. style sheets and scripts. This document title, that's the only thing that we're seeing that's right up here. Okay, I will come in here and start us off with a container. Now, this is intended to be the wrapper around everything on your page so that when you do add some text, something visible to the page, there we go, I get this amount of padding. And there's going to be padding on either side of here. So if I come into my CSS, let's create this main.css one. And we'll just give a background color. Uh, let's go for uh, deep sky blue. There we go. We can see now how large this is. This is the container. My paragraph is inside the container. I have this amount of space provided, and it is automatically centered as well. So as I resize, I'm getting, you can see it's snapping to different points. Those are the built-in breakpoints that you get with Bootstrap. So we have a small, a medium, a large, and an extra large. Those breakpoints will resize your content automatically. Now, if you don't want that, if you want it to fill 100% of the screen all the time, you can do that as well. And there's another class called Container Fluid that will always make your page 100% the width. I prefer this one. I prefer to create some stepping points. Any element that you add inside of here, you can also now style it. So I can come in and use some of the bootstrap classes for styling typography. As an example, there are H1, H2, H3, H4, H5 classes. And there we go. By adding this class, I'm making it look like it is a heading. This could be a div, a paragraph, any tag I want. This class is just going to bump up the font size. So, um, yeah, okay, let's look at a couple elements here. So we're going to look at a couple elements that Bootstrap has. We'll start with one called the Jumbotron. This is a nice big one to show. Uh, Class Jumbotron. Now this is one of those big hero panels that you see up at the top of pages sometimes. There we go. This rectangle, and it's hard to see here, but it's got nice little rounded corners, just slightly rounded corners, and this light gray background. Inside of here, we could add a heading. And that's what I get by default is this. There are other classes for headings called display. And then we can add the numbers one, two, three, or four after this. Here, let's actually, let's do this. There we go. So we use display one and display two. They're both H1 tags, but they've got these classes which are going to set the sizes. And I'm going to delete that paragraph right there. I don't need that one anymore. There we are. So here's my display one, and this is display two. You can see that it is slightly smaller. If I come in and change this to display four, you can see they're getting smaller and smaller as the numbers go down, just like H1 through H4. Uh, we don't have numbers beyond that, but that gives you four levels of heading that you can use on the page. And inside of these jumbotrons, that's a great place to do it. We can add, let's say, a paragraph with the class lead. And we'll just throw some lorem ipsum text inside there. 
and then I'll do another paragraph after that. Oops. There we go. And this one I'm not going to put the class lead on. Lead just means, hey, this is the lead paragraph. Let's make it slightly bigger, slightly more obvious to the page. And I'm going to get rid of this blue because I don't want this to show up. There we are. So this is the lead paragraph, and this is the non-lead paragraph. And you can see that there is a difference in the size there. Um, for overriding, well, let's flip the colors on here. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use the class Jumbotron. This is all you need to do to override any of the styles that you get with Bootstrap. Just use the class that they have. And I'm going to change my background color on this to a dark charcoal, and I'm going to change the default color for fonts to, let's do that, a very, very light gray, almost white. There we go. So I've overridden this class by just overriding the thing that's containing all these elements. My colors are automatically cascading down here, but I've still got the sizes because that's what was being changed. The padding that's built into the Jumbotron, that's still there. The container class is still giving me this padding that I put here and here. And if you want to look for all of these containers, uh, sorry, components, just come into the side menu here, inside the documentation section on the website. Components, go through all these, Jumbotron. So here's an example of the Jumbotron, and we can see they're doing almost the same thing that I was doing here. Okay, alerts. You want to put little messages up on the screen. We have a bunch of built-in colors so these colors here, alert primary, alert secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light, dark, those names are used for a lot of the classes. So on buttons, on alerts, and other elements, you can bring out these colors because they've got that built right in. In fact, let's take a look at their CSS. If I were to go here, you can see that I've got the minified version bootstrap.min, this means I've got the compressed version. If I come in here and I load that, there we go. Here's the compressed version of the CSS. If I take the min part out, here's the non-compressed version. And if I zoom in here so you can see it better, I have actually a whole bunch of variables up at the top here. I can use any one of these names, and here's the primary, secondary, success, info, warning, danger, light, dark. Those are the ones that we have on the buttons and the alerts and other things like that. But we also have these colors. I can use these. And there, here's the breakpoints. These are the breakpoints that get used when we're resizing the page. Font stacks. There is the native sans serif font stack and the native monospace font stack built right into Bootstrap. So if you're ever looking for those, great place to find them. Let's do the indigo one. Let's add that. So I'm going to take this variable indigo. I'm going to go back into my CSS or here. Let's add a paragraph that is not inside of here. It is inside the container, but it's not inside of the Jumbotron. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a style and I'm going to use their variable indigo as the color for my paragraph. Come back and refresh. There we go. I got purple and we have purple on this one as well. So we should uh, specify that paragraphs that are inside the Jumbotron, we still want them to get that color right there. There we go. So we can use their variables. You have a reference to their CSS that you can use at any point. There's all these components to look at. And I'm going to do other videos. I'm going to talk about the layout. I'm going to talk about the grid, how you can put that all together. This is just an introduction to how you can look at the documentation so you can see what these are. For every one of these components, they have samples. It doesn't really matter what it is. So the badges these little things that you can put next to 
other bits of text. They're called badges. So you use the class badge and then badge hyphen and the color that you want. Do you want primary, secondary, light, dark, info, success, warning, danger, all those built right in. So you can just use those class names in conjunction with this. Badge creates the rounded corners, it creates the solid background. The color of the background is set by this, the color of the text is going to be set by this. Okay, so hopefully that's enough to get you started. Like I said, I'm going to be making some more videos. I am going to be doing a whole series on Bootstrap and all the various components and Bootstrap native, how you can use it without jQuery as well. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments down below. I will uh, put this sample HTML and CSS. I'll put that in a code gist and I'll leave that in the description for you. And I will also include the links to Bootstrap and Bootstrap native. I'll put those in the description as well. So as always, thanks for watching.